we believe in a doctrine called dispensational salvations. You might say, what is dispensational salvations? So what that is, is this, is that we believe there are different salvation plans in the Bible. Now, there's a lot of people who get confused about when they look at verses in the Bible that talk about losing salvation or doing works for salvation, and it does not seem to be salvation by faith alone. Our simple answer to that is that those verses are referring to a different time period. It is not applied to us, so we are here. So then, if you see verses that talk about faith and works, it's going to be most likely Old Testament Jews or tribulation or a different time period. Church age, we are known as Christians. Christians, we do not believe in any work whatsoever for salvation. We believe it is faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you cannot lose it. So remember this, people who watch online. We do not believe salvation by works. It is faith alone. That's what we believe in. If you believe in works for salvation or losing your salvation, then you are not saved. If you're going to try to use verses on us that talk about losing salvation or works involved for salvation, you're going to find out it would refer to Jews at a different time period. Now, there are people out there who hate this doctrine of dispensational salvation. My question is why? Dispensational salvation has been the doctrine that has helped many people in our church and who we witness to, especially onliners. They said the doctrine of salvation was the most important concerning dispensationalism because it helped them understand salvation, that they're truly saved by faith, not by works. But then dishonest people, they hate this doctrine. They try to attack this doctrine. And then they try to insist that every single verse in the Bible and every time period is faith alone, not by works. So this is our salvation plan, the Christian. But they do the dishonest move by getting rid of these lines and then trying to combine it all together. No, we don't believe in that. you got to divide it. That's how you're going to be able to be honest in reading what the Scripture says. And not only that, it will be able to convince the person out there. Now, <clears throat> the critics, what they don't like is this, is that what we teach is that in the Old Testament, that because they did not have Jesus' sacrifice yet, so because Jesus did not die on the cross yet, their sins were not taken away yet. So because their sins were not taken away yet, they could not have faith in what Jesus did on the cross to save them. So here's the idea. <clears throat> How can you in the Old Testament, like thousands of years before Jesus died on the cross, have faith alone for salvation if Jesus did not die on the cross yet? How can you believe, put your faith in Jesus' death for salvation if he didn't die on the cross yet? So then, what we believe is that these Old Testament saints, that's why they had no choice but to go under the law. It was not faith. It was the law. So before faith came, we were kept under the law. And so that's why there are works involved right here with their faith. So then because the law is involved and because Jesus did not die to take away their sins yet, they went to a place called Abraham's bosom, which was below the earth. And then when Jesus died on the cross, he finally took away and eliminated all the sins in the Old Testament. And then because of that, that's why these people were finally able to go up after that. But then dishonest people who hate dispensational salvations, they're going to insist right here that no. But I already showed you verses in my other video, so I'll put the video link below. It has to do with limbo. That's the title concerning limbo. They will accuse us for teaching limbo or excuse me, like limbo, because some of those critics out there, they hate me saying that. But aside from that, they will claim that I'm teaching some form of limbo. No, that's not true. <clears throat> I showed you verses in my previous video that they go down over here and that it wasn't until Jesus died on the cross their sins were eliminated. But, and I showed you Hebrews 9 as the evidence. 
But these dishonest people, they're going to look at the second half of Hebrews 9 and say, no, it's actually just so that they can go to heaven, so God can prepare heaven, make it perfect for them. And then they will try to use Dr. Peter S. Ruckman's booklet saying, even Ruckman teaches that. Now, what's so funny is that these people who attack me and people who teach dispensational salvations, they accuse me for following a man named Ruckman. But in their argument, they relied and appealed to Dr. Ruckman's book for their teaching. So what that means is they're picking and choosing what authority they like to suit their teaching. No, I just go by the word of God. And then if a man like Dr. Ruckman, and it's not just Ruckman, any Bible-believing preacher out there, whose writings follows up with the book, well, guess what? The book is my final authority. If that, the person's teaching matched up with the book, then tough luck. I guess we're in the same boat together. All right, the easy answer is this. The easy answer to that is that obviously God had to prepare heaven for the Old Testament saints, but as well as eliminate their sins. So it's both things. Duh, okay, you're just picking and choosing. Another thing is this. Another thing is they look at Hebrews 10 here. So Hebrews 9, I read that for you. Hebrews 9, if you read verses 9 through uh, 9 through 15, I already proved right here Jesus had to die to get rid of their sins. But Hebrews 10 makes it more perfect. In Hebrews chapter 10, look at verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices, see the sacrifices they did in the Old Testament, it did not get rid of their sins, which they offered year by year continually, make the comers thereunto what? Perfect. Okay, now remember that. I'm going to show you some key words right here. Now, let's keep reading. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a what? Remembrance, Remembrance again made of what? Sins every year. See, it's not, for if it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should what? Take away. See, take away sins. So they were still in their sins. Right. Oh, this is limbo? No, this is scripture. Yeah. Now let's keep reading here. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. In burnt offering and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no, uh, thou hast had no pleasure. See that? They were still in their sin. Uh, we will look at verse 8. And above, above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Uh, let's keep reading right here. Verse uh, notice right here, the last part of verse 8. These sacrifices which are offered by the what? Law. Ah, look at this. See, under the law, see, their sins were not eliminated yet. Under the law, you'll notice in your Old Testament Bible, it'll say a lot of portions. It'll mention forgiven. It'll mention life. It'll mention saved, etc., etc., it will use these terms, but it's, they're not perfect. That's the thing. Now, here's the problem with these uh, critics of mine, is that they say right here is that Kim says that they were saved over here, but they weren't really saved until Jesus died on the cross. He's contradicting himself. No, you're just being a moron. Amen. I don't have time for 60-year-old midgets who wear sweaters and then they, they're pale-faced in skin. I don't have time for those kind of people. I'm using them to my advantage where I can defend dispensational salvation, especially at a bigger platform. So I'm just using you as a tool for my advantage. So post endless videos all you want, and then what's going to happen is you just strengthen the doctrine of dispensational salvation for thousands of people who are watching us online and Bible believers. You're just digging up your doom. Go ahead. You can even have the last say. Because why? Because I'm just going to keep pulling up arguments here that people didn't hear about, right. and this will strengthen them. Amen. You're contributing to our movement of dispensationalism. Thank okay. Thank you. Amen. All right. So notice right here, the simple answer is, yes, saved, life, and forgiven. I say that because that's found in the scripture. But we're saying it was not perfect. That's the idea. Okay, because look at 
the verse, it mentioned at uh, verse 8, the law. They were under law and the sins weren't taken away. But if you read Hebrews chapter 9 and then you read verse 19 through 22, they were forgiven. See? They were counted forgiven, but the sins were not taken away. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. That's why if you look up the word saved and life throughout the Old Testament, it's all over. They have life. They are saved. They have life. They have saved. Uh, they're forgiven. But God counted it as that. But it, they were not perfect. They were not perfected. That's the thing. Why? Because you don't get perfect until you get this man dying on the cross for you. Well, why would he say forgiven life and saved? Because they had no choice. They were under what? The word right here. Law. That's why it makes sense at Galatians, it says, before faith came, we were kept under the law. Yeah. Shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. See, this makes a lot more sense now when you divide things in proper context. Now, let's keep reading right here. Uh, verse 11, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can what? Never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath what? Perfected forever them that are sanctified. Okay, this is the words, okay? Now look at your scriptures, okay? Look at your scriptures. Don't just listen to some nanny out there yanking off his mouth like some uh, bitter old woman who doesn't have a ministry out there and just wants to have a life. His thrill, his joy is attacking Bible-believing preachers. Oh, man, the guy should be thanking us. Those losers out there should be thanking us for Bible-believing preachers standing for dispensational salvation because if we weren't, we would not give them material or any teachings for them to build up views. That's the only way they can build up views is attacking yours truly and Bible believers because they know if they taught the Bible themselves, then they know that they lose it. What a bunch of losers. You, if you want to add endless videos, you're just supporting my statement here that you're truly a loser. Now that's your fault, not mine. Uh, that's why look at verse... 17, and their sins and iniquities will I what? Remember. Remember no more. See that? So then that's why the sins were taken away. This supports our teaching right here. So this teaching is actually supportive. Now look at Galatians. Look at Galatians. We're going to look at Galatians chapter 4 right here. So then, a lot of these critics out there, they attack us for saying... Oh, these guys are saying works, 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 and then they're, uh, they're eliminating faith. No. The importance of this system right here, faith and works, is this. In the Old Testament, they could not believe Jesus died, buried, and resurrected to save them. So then what could they believe in? See? So then these people will say, well, they believed in the Lord. Like Abraham, he believed in the Lord. And then they criticize yours truly where I said Abraham believed concerning the stars of his seed. And they say, oh, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. It said Abraham believed in the Lord. Okay, look, you moron, all right? And I'm calling those morons concerning the small little fringe who are discontented and bitter, and they sit at home and troll Bible believers and attack us online. For those who don't know this doctrine, all right, I'm not criticizing you. This is new to you. And some of you out there who disagree with this, hey, I'm not criticizing you either. But who I'm kicking out here is people bitter against Bible believers. All right, now, let me go back to my point here. The importance of me saying that he had to believe concerning the stars of his seed is that is this point right here. If you read the book of Genesis, where Abraham offered up his son Isaac as a sacrifice, James chapter 2 said that was faith and works. Now, here's something interesting. If you look at Genesis, when Abraham offered up his son Isaac as a sacrifice by that work, God said that that confirmed his promise concerning what? His seed. Now, here's something that's important. Because they didn't believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for their salvation, how can you know what they believed in? That's why they had to do their works. So Noah, how did we know he believed in the Lord? 
because he built an ark if he didn't do that work of building an ark you wouldn't know he believed in God that's the same thing with Abraham offering up his son Isaac as a sacrifice that one we know he really believed concerning the promise God made concerning about his seed if you read the Old Testament you can tell which Jews uh, had no belief or the Jews that did have belief in the wilderness with Moses' law. Yep. How? The ones whose works showed by following the law. Yep. Whereas those who didn't, God said they did not have belief. That's right. See, that shows right here that the Old Testament had a different salvation yep. from Christians. Their salvation was faith and works. Christians, our faith, because he already died on the Amen. cross, we just believe Jesus died, buried, and resurrected. That's it, because we know what to believe in. The Jews, however, you can just say believe in God, but what does that mean? A lot of different people, you can say they believe in God, but, that does, uh, but the Bible also says that the book of James, the devils believe about God too. That don't mean they're saved. A lot of, lot of devils went to heaven, I guess, in your teaching right there. If, if you believe that Old Testament salvation is just believing in God, believing in God. Well, they believed in what God said, you might say. Okay, how do you know that they believed what he said? Because they showed it. That's why. Okay, well, anyway, back to the point at hand is that as we look at right here at Galatians chapter 4, now, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Okay, until some specific time period, which you can probably guess, but we'll come over here. This is the time right here. Until the time they were under bondage, right? That's what you read at the verse. What is this bondage referring to? Verse uh, 3, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, even, uh, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the what? Law. law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Ah, so look at verse 4. Verse 4 says this was the fullness referring to the time here the perfection and the fullness was at this time before that time they were under the law does this support what i showed you so many times over and over again Amen. yes they had no choice well they had faith in jesus death burial and resurrection look at right there until the time appointed they couldn't even do that so they had no choice but to be under the law that's why it makes sense when you read Galatians uh, chapter 3, chapter 3 and verse 23, they could not have faith alone for salvation. That official faith was not there yet. Before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should what? Afterwards be revealed. Because this is the faith right here. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. So before that time, they couldn't do that. That's why it makes sense when you go to Romans 3, it was a time period right there. Go back to Romans 3. Go back to Romans 3. That's why it makes sense right here in verse, Romans chapter 3, verse 21 through 22. They all want to scream and shout, that Romans, uh, so Romans chapter 3 right here, the, uh, the law couldn't save them, so they had to have faith for salvation. No, Romans 2, as I've argued so many times, showed you that by going by the law, that was your salvation. The critics will say, that was only hypothetical, because no one could keep the whole law. Hey, man, here's the thing, they weren't perfected. They didn't have the fullness of it. So then Romans 3 pointed out until this time period came, then they could receive this perfection and fullness. If you want to argue Romans 3 disproves Old Testament salvation, then here's a big problem for you. Then you have to make Romans 3 applicable in the Old Testament time period. But that's not going to work if you look at Romans 3 verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, right? The law and the prophets, the Old Testament talked about this. 
But look at the problem here. Verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. What is this faith of Jesus Christ based upon? 23, everyone is a sinner. So you have to admit that, first step. Verse 24, you got to go to the redemption in Jesus Christ. And verse 25, that includes what? His death on the cross. Wait, wait, we got a problem right here. What about so many Old Testament people who did not know that Jesus would die buried and resurrected? The disciples didn't know. Nope, they didn't. The Jews didn't know. Otherwise, they wouldn't even crucify him. Yeah. Look at that right here. So you can't put Romans 3 at an Old Testament time period. You want to say faith alone for Romans 3, but faith in what? Right. Paul based it on Romans chapter 3, verse 21 through 25, what Jesus did on the cross. And if you're going to be honest, that is based at verse 21. But now, the righteousness of God. See, it's a time period. Look at verse 25. It's the time period when he died on the cross. Compare that with Galatians. We looked at chapter 3 and 4. It was a time period when he died on the cross. How about that? Whether you like it or not, you can't escape this. You can go in circles all you want and yang 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 yang, but I'll tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna prove every single time through scripture Amen. that if you read it exactly as it says and you look at scripture with scripture comparing them together and by context, this is irrefutable. Amen. This is irrefutable. You can't go around that.